welcome back to another episode to another quick episode <coughs> and welcome back to another quick episode of Unplugged TV sunny Australia and some people have asked the capacity is actually, of the battery when we say it is a software issue that it can only be in the bottom buffer from what we can battery. see is regardless what the battery state of health is it always charges so to my observation I could not really see a difference in minimum I voltage make a test today again and see in. how far we can push the voltage down um, when the engine kicks in there we go 3747 seven. engine just kicked in okay and now the voltage is of course rising all right let's turn it off and this is uh, 25% 9.6 ampere hours now this is the minimum voltage I can get what did you understand anything yes yeah, see me neither um, let me explain So even the dog shows us 70 or 80% state of health of the battery only. We assume the battery in the car is fine. <coughs> I've got a little bit of a sore throat. So if I sound differently today, um, yeah, that's why. I actually just found the battery card um, before they did the reset on the old battery. This was back in October 2017. So let's assume we have this capacity. The BMU thinks it has only 30.7 ampere hours in the full capacity available in the battery. So we've got the battery here. This is what the BMU thinks the battery has on capacity. We've got the bottom buffer, which we can't use, and we've got potentially a little um, top buffer as well. But this might be very, very small if there is a top buffer at all. We now know the battery charges to 4.1 volts every time the charging stops and 4.1 volts is actually the full 100% state of charge of the battery as per the manufacturer's specs. So there may not be a top buffer at all. So how this all works is now there's no minimum voltage when the engine kicks in. The BMU allows the battery to fully charge to 4.1 volts maximum capacity 30.7 ampere hours in this case and from there on the BMU calculates the ampere hours taken out of the battery while driving. It calculates the ampere hours which are going out of the battery until it thinks it has around 30% left of the battery and then it starts the engine. So at some stage the engine will kick in and this point is determined by the BMU and the available capacity. So if the BMU thinks we've got 30.7 ampere hours available and it counts them down to around 30% uh, left it starts the engine at some point. So, and then with the old battery, they did the reset and got the battery back to and got the battery back to 38 ampere hours. So now the BMU thinks the battery is the same battery. The battery has 38 ampere hours. And if it starts counting down now, so how far does it go down? And as we have seen, the voltage at this point in my car is 3.7 uh, what was it? 747? I think it was. So this is the point where the engine kicked in today running down the battery to 25% with a heater. If we do the same with the same battery but the BMU thinks it has less capacity, what is the voltage then when the engine fires? So the theory behind it is if the BMU limits the capacity of the battery it fires the engine at a higher voltage then with a the correct calibration. In this case we know it's 3.75 volts but in this case it might be higher, it might be at 3.8 volts. So it doesn't use the full capacity of the battery while in this case it does. How is the BMU limiting the available capacity in the battery? Because this is exactly our assumption. The battery in the car is fine but the BMU allows only 30.7 ampere hours to be used while after a reset it allows the full 38 ampere hours to be used. And this is now the big question. This is exactly what Mitsubishi told us. They are trying to protect the battery. This is on purpose. The BMU calculates the state of health down on purpose 
to protect the battery. As you can see here, the the depth of discharge is only so so with the degradation shown in the dog it uses less capacity of the battery than with a full calibration. If we do a reset every year, every half year, every couple of months, it uses the full capacity of the battery. It uses more. The depth of discharge is higher after a reset than with the downgraded battery. And Mitsubishi says this is on purpose to protect the battery. And I can see where they are coming from because if the car uses only a certain portion of the battery, it obviously keeps this battery healthier than this one. Definitely. <sighs> yeah guys, so this is the big question now. Is Mitsubishi right what they are saying? Is this all on purpose? Is this as per design? Are they trying to protect the battery? They're using a fairly small amount of the battery, downrating the battery quickly. So we can only use a certain portion of the battery, which is of course healthier for the battery. Of course, the depth of discharge is smaller. You keep the battery healthy. You, you definitely prolong the battery life through this. I can totally understand the approach, thinking and design behind all this. Saying, look, this car, this car's battery is designed to last the whole life of the car. And therefore we have to limit the usage of the battery after a while. You will get the full EV range at the beginning, but after one, two, three years, it will be limited to prolong the battery life. And as you can see, as we have seen 100 times, a pure reset of the BMU will give you the full capacity back. And then the car performs as, as advertised, as promised. But then on the other hand, it will of course use a higher depth of discharge on the battery, put more stress on the battery, and it will decrease the battery's life and health over time, of course. So for me, it looks like when they have built the car in 2013, 2014, they have not tested the car as we drive it now, because most of us drive this car in pure EV mode as much as possible to get the fuel efficiency, to get the benefit from it. But this is potentially not how they tested the car back in the day in 2014, 2013. They maybe did more hybrid, hybrid driving, more long journeys in these cars. Of course, the battery health is then far higher than if you drive this car only in EV mode. So guys, so far, I leave this all with you as always. Leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think. And this is Andy from Unplugged TV Australia signing off. You stay charged and we will see us again in the next video very soon. And then I will tell you what's in this suitcase. Okay guys, see you then. Thanks again. Bye bye.